Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of 5. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got 5 Options show. Yes, and I was just listening again to our new intro and I actually have to say I'm quite proud of us. This is actually our third intro that we have made, third one, right Marta? Well, that we have made is probably like 5,000 third, yes. but that we have played. <laughs> that we have played and used as an actual intro, yes, this is the third version. And I don't know, Marta, if you have heard our first intro lately? No, I have not. You should. And everyone who is interested in our first intro, I would like to tell you that we are making throwbacks to some of our very, very first episodes. So if you have any podcast app or you are listening to Spotify, then you can find or actually on iTunes as well. I, I'm sorry, I don't have an iPhone and sometimes I feel like I'm really bad to all the iPhone users because I never acknowledge them. So if you have iTunes, if you have Spotify or if you are using any podcasting app for Android, we are now throwing back to our very first episodes because we want you to remember and we want to also remember how we sounded at the very beginning. And this is where you can listen to our very first intro and very first outro and actually now we have throwback our first episode marta remember our first episode i remember the topic of our first episode definitely and i don't remember the title but i remember it's about a guy that wants to break up with his girlfriend and doesn't know how to yes guys so it was actually five ways to break up with your girlfriend and yes that was our very first show and look how far we came because today in a studio we have lina yes it's me <laughs> yes hello lina who will talk about ways to well you will tell us exactly guys but i think it's something about expanding your mind yeah, we'll talk about five experiences that opened my mind. It's basically my life, my life stages that uh, turned me into a person that I am right now. Okay, so as you can see, from helping a guy to break up with his girlfriend until this moment, this moment where we have someone who will talk about life-changing experiences and expanding mind, we've came a long way. But I have to say, I loved every minute of it and I am really encouraging all of you to listen to our very first episode. I will definitely do that. So Marta, tell us a little bit more about today's guest. Yes. Hello, Lina. Can you please tell us your full name so that I don't, you know, make some drastic mistakes? Yeah, it's a difficult one. My name is Lina Stashkevichute. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why I guys did not even attempt to say it because I would not have liked to say something completely wrong. So today with Lina, as we've mentioned, we are going to talk about five experiences that opened Lina's mind, which exactly. I think is a truly fascinating topic. And thank you so much, Lina, for agreeing to come here to the studio and share your story with us. So just tell us a little bit, who are you? It's hard to present myself, but basically I see myself as a person, as a soul that happens to be here in this life right now. I'm a young person. I just finished my studies to be more down to earth, a multimedia design studies. I came to Denmark two years ago and now I'm here right now trying to become a digital nomad. This is my dream that I try to pursue. Okay, this is Lina, me. wait a moment. The digital what? Digital nomad. Digital. Okay, this has to be something new because I have never heard about it and you have to tell us what that means. Yeah. So digital nomad, it's already a movement that's quite popular in between uh, freelancers and digital workers that work with computers. Basically, this is a concept that allows me just to have my job place and take it with me wherever I go, wherever I travel around the world. So if I have a laptop, I have my skills, I have my clients, which can I totally find online and I'm not tied to any 
location to any place to any employer that I should be dependent on basically it's a concept that allows me to be independent to work yeah it's a it's a concept that definitely requires an expanded mind i will have to tell you because i think 10 15 years ago that was not a thing at all which also reveals our age right now. <laughs> that, what do you that's, think? That's okay. We can park the age, uh, yes. <laughs> the age topic somewhere. <laughs> and actually, I wanted to ask you, Lina, do you remember who you wanted to become when you were a child? Actually, I do. First dream, I wanted to be a doctor because I really liked my doctor. She was a very sweet person, which not really focused on the curing the disease so much, but she really connected to me as a person. And then at the same time, I had another dream next to it to become a singer. But few years after that, that was my dream in the kindergarten. I dreamed of becoming a journalist and I actually made a journal myself and I drew every girl all the advices for the people I wanted to teach my classmates and actually made a journal that the next day I came and sold it to my classmates and teacher was impressed. So really already then I really felt that I wanted to teach and uh, give my knowledge some um, findings that I have to share it. But uh, I remember my mom told Lena, it's dangerous to be a journalist. You know that actually uh, they get killed or you talk about politics or some topics. People, they don't want to hear that. And I actually listened to her because it sounded quite dangerous. So you're doing a great job, girls. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> we are living here well, on the edge in the radio <laughs> studio. <laughs> well, you know what? Actually, today we will be having a guest that will talk about food and veganism. And I think that is the closest to the danger that we have ever been because I have seen some comments on Facebook and some people really have opinions. And I think... Food and veganism are one of those topics that actually can put us on the line, Marta. So don't joke with that. Okay, we are not joking with that. So that dreams that you've had uh, when you were a child and who you want to become now, how do you see it? So as the years passed and I chose to be after that, I found my talent in uh, programming, not in programming, in IT technology that I'm very up, up to the date and I really understand it good and my mind works well. The teacher noticed it. I was in a series of contests winning the first place and I decided, OK, I will work with computers. But then at the same time, I went to art school and I really loved creating and I made animation movie myself when I was 15 with the help of my teacher and then I decided to combine these two things and study multimedia. But here in the studies I also learned about social media and I decided that I can slightly come back to my old dream and at the same time be a little journalist. Like, uh, so when I was traveling, I also always would make a picture and write a description. So I don't touch the politics topic. So yet. <laughs> yet, I guess. But I'm actually becoming closer to something that's journalist. Okay, so you made a circle all around exploring a few different things and you have connected them in a special for you way. Yeah. And now you are coming slightly back to your child dream. That's really interesting to hear. So you want to share the five experiences that have opened your mind. And I will ask you first just to tell us what are those five experiences and in a moment, we will talk about why you chose that topic. Yeah. So these five headlines, it's uh, hard to put my experiences in the short headline. But basically, it's the first stage of my life when I grew up in a small village like that was like into a box of which I managed to get out. The second part was the bad things that happened in my life, the things that dragged me to depression or emotional breakdown. But in the long term, I realized the power that comes from these bad experiences. So I managed to learn from that. And after that, I decided to try it out and I moved out. I traveled, which actually proved me that I can do what I want if I open my mind, my perception, if I believe in it and I'm thinking positively, things do happen. From that, I learned the art of open of my mind, soul and heart. And I call myself Lebenskunstler. That's a German word. I don't even know if I pronounce it good, but it's an uh, artist of life. So basically, it's art of connecting these few things, mind, body, intuition, soul. Everything comes together in balance. And the fifth thing is the future, my look to the future. So I dream uh, 
about my life in the future without any borders, without any rules. I don't have a rule that I need to achieve this or need to achieve that. I have plans, I have goals. They're unlimited and I believe in law of attraction. Okay, thank you for sharing those five experiences. So tell us, why did you choose to share that topic with us and our listeners? Sometimes my friends look at me about, uh, they hear my stories, how I traveled, or how did I even had courage to go on the road, on hitchhike alone in winter. I did that. I have been explaining it to my friends and they still don't understand, but how? And then I realized that it's probably because somehow throughout my life, I became a little more open-minded than my friends, especially the friends from school or from the village I have grew up in. And I decided that I should share because I really want to connect to the people that are very simple. Because here in Denmark, it's so many people that already achieved a lot and already us, uh, internationals, we already did a big step. We moved out already from our uh, previous countries. We already achieved something. But I want to also inspire those people that are still young, that are still in uh, back in home, that I still lack this courage. And I wanted to connect with uh, those simple people to give them motivation that anyone can do it. Yeah, so actually, uh, Lina, if I understand this correctly, you have a purpose to awaken as many people who were brought up maybe in a similar conditions to yours where you because I think this is what you will tell us in your very first experience. So basically, you would like to inspire them to be brave, courageous, um, and open their mind and try things. Is that your purpose? Exactly. I feel very much connected to people in our planet. And I think that all of us deserves love. And all of us should live in that feeling, should live in a positive mind and in motivation. And once you trust yourself and trust the world and believe that everything is going to happen good because many people let themselves down for no reason. So I really want to inspire them and let them think at least for this interview while they're listening to it, to have this, to connect to themselves that actually I can do it as well. So I want to give this feeling to the people. Okay, Mm -hmm. that sounds really good. And I am really looking forward to exploring how we can do that today. So Let's start with your first experience. Tell us a little bit more about that first part of your life. Yeah, because actually you have sent us a little bit of a, of a bullet points and you had something like, all my life I was taught to be strong and patient. So what kind of experience was that for you? Basically, many times in childhood, my parents told me, Lena, don't cry. You are strong. You need to be strong. Your life is in front of you. It's hard to finish school. It's hard to study. It's hard to work. And you need to do this. You, if you want to be good in life, you need to suffer. And I didn't really like this. I was like, okay, like I could do that. But it's not that I'm weak that I don't want to suffer. But I saw broader than my friends that my parents did that I could also choose and live a different life and to actually don't get locked in the small box. Because growing up in a very small village of few hundred people in my school or uh, looking at the idols that have been at that moment, there were certain people that uh, at the moment when I was a child, I wouldn't look forward more than this because also I didn't know English so good. And all the mindset, all the perception for me as a child was my environment, the people that I saw there. So basically, how many people were in your village exactly? In my village, it was basically five people, my family. Because in Lithuania, my dad was a farmer and uh, our village was called one house village. Okay. Marta, did you ever heard about something like this? I guess in some like old times or in places that are, you know, there are few people in a per square meter, I guess these things can happen. Yeah. Yeah. So the nearest neighbor that we had was three kilometers away. Mm. Okay, that that's quite a jog or a walk, I have to say. So you want to say that actually there was a certain mindset in your family because I imagine five people That's all you had at the very beginning. And then you went to school, right? Yeah. So first five years, six years of your life were within your five people village. Basically, yes. And I cannot say that my parents are not open minded, but also growing up in the village and also going to the other village where people are very judgmental. My parents even were afraid of thinking more than this. 
they'd be like, no, I cannot wear a short skirt because what will the people think? Or no, I cannot go travel because how can I live and what will they think? So would you say that the, the social pressure yes. uh, is high in a places like this? Especially when everybody knows each other very well. So you wrote to us before when uh, when applying for being our guest, you wrote a little bit about society. Yes. So you wrote that the way for you was set out by the society, but you realized you were not a robot. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about that. How the society works, I think it's a lot of... Uh, sometimes we don't even think about it. It's... Um, things that we grow up with, all these uh, rules, they're not really said that it's rules, but everybody knows that if you, you're a successful person, you need to have a good degree, you need to make a family, you need to have kids and uh, have a good house. And these were the rules that society always imposed on me. Every time I was judged how I look, I was judged how I'm studying good, but then I realized that, okay, I have all that, right? But am I really happy? And what makes me actually happy? So I started to think, okay, even though society thinks that what's uh, good, it's actually that, I realized that what makes me happy as a person is something else. And um, society makes some of my friends not to realize that. I think what I know what you mean, especially that if we will come back to, and I have to tell you, quite hermetic and quite unusual circumstances in which you were raised because it's, you know, to be in such a small household, village of five people, then you go to school, you have the closest neighbor three kilometers from you, and then you basically uh, don't really have an access to many ideas. Well, probably you could see them on TV or maybe on internet because, of course, you have an access to that. But your closest role models, your cro closest people, if they have especially, you know, one, let's say, perfect recipe of how life should be, yeah. that has to be quite difficult uh, for a young girl, for a kid and then a young girl to actually break through that. So I guess my question is, is your first experience about the fact that you were put in a certain specific social conditioning and then you decided to break out of it? I think I realized actually it after I broke out of it, like what actually happened to me. But what was that sparkle that actually made you get out of it? Because, you know, many people, they are uh, complying with those rules. Uh, they don't have a breakthrough like this. They basically, as you said, I wouldn't call them robots, but it is a social conditioning. You know, it's it's yeah. normal. We know about this. We can read article about this. Social conditioning is something that is even considered healthy for a society as whole. So we have some sort of like a recipe for life or something, right? So my question is, what happened in you? What do you think actually happened in you? that allow you to snap out of it and say, okay, I actually don't really like it. This is not who I am. Yeah. Do you remember that? I think then I should go to the second point already, because to, to answer your question, it was the bad experiences in my life, because it was something that uh, really went, took me to the border situation, like uh, people hurting me, my friends really not accepting me. Actually, in school, I had one situation that uh, I made a party and then it went bad. And since I was the organizer, the whole school, the whole 150 people turned against me. And I was the only one against the whole five classes of 11 grades. And they were all mad at me. And there was a huge pressure on me, on a single person. It's your fault that the party went bad. It's your fault. It was your friends that destroyed it. And I was left alone. And even my best friends, they're like, yeah, Lena, everything will be good, but we agree with them. And then I realized that what could worse happen? Like, since my whole life was in that box, and all that box, it fell apart. All that box, that were all my friends, that was my universe in that point. All my friends was something why I was trying to look nice in school, because they will see me. And I realized that this box was not the only uh, my life. I realized that, okay, you know, guys, I will leave this school soon. In one year, I finish it. And then I can move out and I have no reason to stay here, no reason. I detached myself from this uh, toxic environment. It was something that really struck me hard and I was crying. I was getting depressed. It was difficult, 
But then I led myself to a thought that bad f- emotions is something that I should detach myself to. And it's not my fault that these people are so angry. I realized that it's not my fault. And I did everything I could the best. And since I know that I did put all my energy in making it the best, I don't uh, try to prove that it was my fault. I don't try to... I actually try to do the opposite and say, okay, so if I put all my power into it, then maybe it's not for me and I should move on. So I did. So what was the move on? Where did you move on to? After that, basically, I moved to... After I finished school, I moved to Denmark. <laughs> okay. You've mentioned before also that you went alone on a trip in Lithuania. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? All right. That's a good one. So I had always a dream to travel, but I grew up in um, together with my grandma and my parents could never leave the house, not even for one day. So I had a dream. My sister actually found on Facebook that uh, people are going with bicycles around Lithuania. And for three months, I was telling to my parents, I will do this. And they're like, are you joking? You're not going to do this. Like, we will not let you. And it was one month until the trip when my parents started asking, so did you prepare the bags? Did you prepare the bicycle? My parents helped me. And since uh, one morning at 5 a.m., it was the moment when we had to gather up. My mom took me with the car, the bicycle, drove me to the Vilnius, to the capital. And I met these five people that I didn't know at all, that I only sent one email. And we cycled around Lithuania. It was 1,755 kilometers in 20 days. We slept in a tent. We got to know the Lithuanian forest. The really conne- I really connected to the nature. I was 17 years old. And uh, I was very proud of myself. That was one of the first empowering experiences. And it was the point where my parents, they really trusted me that, okay, you cycled around Lithuania, you can actually do it. You can move now. So what was the biggest learning for you from that trip by that yourself and strangers around your country? Yeah, because if I'm to be honest, it's kind of uh, freakishly scary. Uh, you know, when you hear, uh, because as you said, Nina, at the beginning, you would like to spread this message that we all can get out of our comfort zones. But this is actually this This sounds a a bit dangerous, you know, to go somewhere with people you don't know, you met on Internet. So, uh, yeah, what this experience gave you in the end of the day? Well, basically, it proved me that all the worries that I had before, like you're saying, it sounds dangerous. And I didn't know these people. And I was the youngest one as well. And I didn't know how to repair the bike at all. In fact, I didn't know at all nothing. So it proved me that I should just take a chance and try it. And it, it turned out very well. And it uh, gave me courage to for my further travels. So tell us what were the other trying it out things apart from testing yourself as a biker in Lithuania? It was also testing myself as a hitchhiker without no money. Yes, exactly. The budget is the thing that really holds a lot of people from traveling. Although they really want it, they're like, I don't have money, I cannot. And I decided to make an experiment. I really love experimenting. <laughs> with my life. That's the art of life. So I didn't have no money, basically. But I proved myself that you don't need money for transport. You can totally hitchhike. And for accommodation as well. I was, we were doing a lot of couch surfing, which is not nothing new. But sometimes we couldn't find that. We would just sleep outside then. Okay, you are mentioning we. So were you going with someone else? Or were you going alone? I had like maybe five Euro trips. So first time I hitchhiked, I was 18 with uh, four Lithuanian girls more. And uh, surprisingly, we even made two drivers to take us both five in one car, even though the, there were five seats. <laughs> okay. So impossible is possible. Once you think about it, that it's possible, it's possible. So this is the biggest lesson that anything that you think is impossible, it is impossible. Just because you think like that. But once you open your mind and think, If I want to do it, I will do it. And I realized that I can do anything I think of if I try hard enough and I want it strong enough. Then I can achieve it. So how many hitchhiking trips have you have you actually made in, in Lithuania back then? In Lithuania, I didn't hitchhike so much. I went straight to Poland, Slovakia. Okay, I so they were, they were international. Yeah. So after you biked the Lithuania, yeah. when you were 17, Once you were 18, you started to hitchhike all yes. over Europe, I would say, maybe the 
neighboring countries of Lithuania at the beginning, yes? Exactly. And how many of those, how many of uh, those hitchhiking trips have you made? So basically I would have one longer trip, like week or week and a half each summer or maybe even more. Actually, even more. But okay. that was the second trip when I was got 18. I was, uh, sum- it was summer after I finished school and I didn't know what to do. And I applied to Danish University, to Business Academy, actually. I didn't get the result yet. I didn't have a graduation. So I went for a hitchhiking trip to Poland, Slovakia, Czech, Austria. It was quite a big one. Yeah. And that was the one with the four girls, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Lina, it's very interesting, the story that you have to share with us today. And uh, we will have to close uh, for today. And we are looking forward to the second episode where we can ask you even more questions and you can tell us even more stories. So thank you so much. Thank you, Anna, for co-hosting. And all our listeners, we hope that you will tune in for our next episode. You are listening to You've Got Five Options radio show where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number. To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, thefiveoptions.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks!